My name is Uhuru Mufukeng and welcome to the South African Book Review Sessions, your online political book club where everything political literature is dissected, vivisected and eviscerated. When we started this channel, we promised to review a book each and every single day. You guys, the past couple of days have been very hectic and as such, it has been quite difficult for me to do so but i promise to make it up to you expect an overlunch of an avalanche of videos coming through this particular week and while you're on that there's a particular button there it's, it's written subscribe a subscribe button just there there the bottom of your screen go ahead and click on that subscribe like click 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 now by clicking on that subscribe button you're not going to incur any extra cost i repeat clicking on the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen comes at absolutely no extra cost also importantly by clicking on that subscribe button you're making sure that you don't miss out on any review on any reviews of your favorite books or any recommendations of your favorite books so go ahead and click 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 on that subscribe button what are we doing today today we're doing the best 10 recommended south african biographies recommended by who Yours truly, of course. Now, guys, uh, I'm a bit biased on the collection that I've selected here. I am. I chose books that I personally liked. I chose books that have had an impact on me. I've chose. I. I. I, I did. That books I ignored. Basically ignored. Like knowing that they're that good and like, nah, I'm just gonna ignore this. This has been overdone. It's tired. It's tired. It should not be like it's tired. So these are my ten books. But these are my best 10 recommended South African biographies starting right now. At number 10, Ramaphosa, The Man Who Would Be King uh, by Ray Hartley. Interesting book. It tells you about the sitting president of the Republic of South Africa. It gives us an understanding of his background, his education, factors that played a critical role. Basically, you know what a biography does tells you about his achievements and it portrays him as a very good leader now it is a good book i think you should buy it read about the president understand the president and stop casting a casting expressions on the president's background this book will give you a better detailed and an enlightened view of who president ramaphosa is now a bit low on this book is that it was released in 2017 so when, while reading it 2017 going towards the ANC's NASA conference. Now, while reading it, you'll always feel that sense of canvas and sense of campaign within it. But besides that, it is a book which I think every South African should read. Ray Hartley's Ramaphosa, The Man Who Would Be King at number 10. At number 9 is Mark Matabane's Gaffer Boy. This is one of South Africa's best selling biographies of all time best-selling autobiographies of all time because it is not just a bio it's an autobiography mark matabani tells of his own story his background how, where we grew up his experiences his hardships basically the book is about how a young man views apartheid south africa while growing up now this is the very same person he eventually left the country went to the united states where the book eventually got published he tells of his story from growing up until he leaves and how sports played an incredible role in him departing the country at number nine gaffer boy mark matabane interesting book at number eight david james smith young Nelson, young mandela now this book tells us basically about nelson mandela from his birth up until the time of his arrest in 1962. It gives us glimpses of eventually what happened in his life post his release from Robben Island, he, the emergence to ANC president and subsequently being the first democratically elected president of the country. It does speak of that, of how the decisions he took many years ago ended up affecting him in his old age. It is an incredible book. It tells of tales and, and, and it raises issues which other books about Nelson Mandela do not raise. It's an incredible book. David James Smith, Young Nelson Mandela at number eight. 
at number seven it is an autobiography 419 days by winnie mandela it is a beautiful book a very sad book it tells of an of a woman who was incarcerated in 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 and isolated for 419 days it tells of a regime that wanted to break a spirit of a determined black woman <laughs> guys you should get this book you should read this book more especially get this book for your women get your this book for your sisters get this book for your daughters get this book for your mothers this is an incredible book read it yourself but also i recommend it for women this book, it, it, we need pause ourselves. Yo, guys, this is a very sad book. 419 Days, an, autogra an autobiograph by Winnie Matigizela Mandela is at number seven. At number six, Let My People Go, an autobiography also by the chief. Chief A.J. Lutuli, Chief Albert Lutuli, a former president of the African National Congress. Now, this is the man who is the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize outside the West. Like, outside the West, the first person of color to receive that particular award. And... It tells of his story of leading the African National Congress, leading the African people, and, and how he was stripped of his chieftaincy because of his membership of the African National Congress. It's because it speaks of his religious nature. It tells of his incarceration. It, it, it is a beautiful written book. It tells of how he got politically, uh, more, uh, politically active within the African National Congress at an old age, but how he became a darling of the people. This man was one of the most popular presidents of the African National Congress. We see Nelson Mandela is popular. This man might have been just a bit more popular or as equal as popular as Mandela in his own times. Let my people go, Chief Albert Lutuli at number six. Guys, get this book. At number five, it is uh, Mark Fisser Tabompegi, The Dream Deferred. If you have read many books by Tab about Tabompegi, but guys, this is one book that will leave you with a better understanding of who Tabumpegi is. It will paint more than a picture of a whiskey drinking, pipe smoking, intellectual, poetic president, but it gives you how his background was influenced from his childhood, the environment he grew up under, how he became the son of the revolution through advocate Dumanoko, Oliver Tambo, and how he grew up as, 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 as a as, as as a child of of the African National Congress, it tells you of his time in office. It gives you a better detail of who the president of all books written by about Tabumpegi. I think this is the best one. It is better than Mark William Kumet, than, 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 than than Marvin William Kumete's um, Tabumpegi and the Battle of the Soul for the ANC. It is better than 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 than, than that one. The uh, the Tabumpegi I know. This is. The best account on who the uh, former president Tabumpegi is. You read this book, you will understand the man better. Tabumpegi, The Dream Deferred by Mark Hafiser. It's at number five. At number four, Solomon Sol Plaki, A Life of Solomon Tsekiso Plaki by Brian William. Guys, this book left me. It's a huge book. It's a huge book because the man did a lot of things. It tells you of a time between 1876 and 1932, between his birth and death. The man did a lot. The man is an epitome of black excellence. The man was 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 basically preluding black success to the world back in the days when it seemed very somehow to do so. This is this is about this is about the life of Solomon Sekisoplaki. It it gets into detail where he was born. His his background, his schooling, his influences, his works, his traveling, he loved the United K. He 
this book tells you about his time in the United K. It tells you about the time as the SG of the African National Congress, his despondence with the African National Congress and the bitterness the family has towards the African National Congress. It's a beautiful book. I love this book. It taught me so many things. I was so shocked. This is the first man to translate uh, Julius Caesar into an African language. He transla translated it into, into Tswana. He had two newspapers back in the days that whom he had founded and he guys this 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 is a beautiful book by brian william sol blackie a life of solomon tekiso blackie at number four at number three robert mcbride the struggle continues by brian brianstein <laughs> guys uh this is basically this is basically my favorite biography of, of of everyone that have the, this is my favorite if this all of this were to turn it into movies this would be the most fascinating movie it would the storyline would be fantastic the character the main character would be somehow because hey man this man was a proper revolutionary in his days this man still is today you know he is really anti-corruption he's a proper 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 revolutionary it tells you of his time growing up it tells you of high school it tells you of his time in Durban. it tells you of his recruitment into the mk it gets into in deep into the operations they did and it tells you how he became MK commander of his unit. It tells you how he was sentenced to death. This man was sentenced to death. This man was sentenced to death. Stayed in 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 in, in actually um in death row for a couple of years. <laughs> for a couple of years, it, it stayed in death row, and he survived death row. Interesting book. It's more interesting because this is a man who's still alive. You can go go check, make an an appointment, and go talk to him very interesting fellow one of my favorite personalities within the political spectrum right now guys this book i love it robert mcbride the struggle continues brian winston is at number three at number two is robert sobukwe by uh how can a man die better benjamin it's written by benjamin pokrand <laughs> <gasps> ah he's really too <laughs> oh guys what a book Actually, I don't know why I I didn't make this book. Actually, I was very conflicted. I think this this is a beautiful book, more especially for me, an African National Congress activist. I didn't know much about Sobuk. I just know he's a product of the ANC Youth League, who left the ANC to form the PAC. Didn't know much, but Benjamin Pokrand was clearly one of his best friends. He knew the man. He stayed with the man. They shared so many things. He was one of the closest individuals to Robert Subuku. And he eviscerated this man's life. This man was, was, was an exceptional man. No, guys, this man was exceptional. This man was arrested, sentenced, and kept in prison for nothing. They created a clause for him to keep him there. This book tells you all about that. This book tells you of how marvelous of a man the prof was. It you guys, you and it it debunks the myth that there was competition between Mandela and the prof. This book tells you of how close those chaps were, how respectful of one another they were, if through prison, outside prison, in the youth league, and so forth. This book gives you a better detail. Ah, uh, guys, this is an exceptional book. How can a man die better? Oh, guys. Those were words by Horatius. Basically, apparently, hey, I'll tell you one day. Check out in the the description on the uh, check out the description below. You'll find links to this books. I'll be explaining this book into detail. Wonderful book. Number two, Robert Sobukwe. How can a man die better? Benjamin Pokrand. Number one, I believe this is the best biography in the country. <laughs> ah, guys. The man who killed, uh, this is the man who killed apartheid. The life of Dimitri Tafendas. It's written by Harris Dosamitis with Harry Logren. <laughs> Guys, we do not know much about this man. We do not know much about this man. Actually, the system, the apartheid system, went so far that it overlapped into the democratic dispensation. And that information about this man was basically censored. This man killed for vote. 
This man killed the sitting president of the country, killed H.F. Fervurt in parliament on the 6th of September, 1966. Guys, <laughs> this man, and they, they claim he was crazy. Guys, no. Check again the description there, below, there. You'll find a link. I'll be explaining to you this book into detail. It's a beautiful book, guys. This is the best biography. It tells us of a man who was determined to save South Africa so much that he wanted to be architect of apartheid dead by whatever means possible. And because there's so little information exposed to the public on this man's life, what do Somets and 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 and, and, and what do Somets and 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 Lochran did in, with this book is wonderful because they went deep into the archives, they went deep into the police station archives, they went everywhere and collected information about Dimitri offenders and knitted it together and presented a picture of a revolutionary per excellence. This is a book that I love. Guys, that is my 10 best South African biographies. He is recommended by myself. If you want to check out the books, check out the description below. You'll find links on the description below.